We'll begin with a quote from Robert. You know, one of the fun things about this, uh, ex this uh, conference has been that many of the papers have been delivered in front of the subjects of the papers, and we are, uh, we are doing that as well. And so, uh, Robert, I'll read your words to you. We are not actually engaged in helping to sell work or helping to promote an aesthetic. What we are doing is to respond to a need that we found very widespread, to have the basic essentials of any professional practice. You need to have space to work in, you need to have stimulus, you need to have people to talk to, you need an audience, you need, above all, to have freedom. And that is why we exist in places where there are quite severe restraints. If we look at the past 15 or 20 years of contemporary South Asian art history, the Triangle Network chapters in South Asia, particularly Koj in India, Vassal in Pakistan, Brito in Bangladesh, Tirtha in Sri Lanka, and Sutra in Nepal, stand out as particularly important sites for the production of art. The five organizations held international workshops beginning in 1997, when Koj held its first two-week program in Modi Nagar, outside of Delhi. Triangle workshops bring artists together for short, intense bursts of creative activity. At their most productive, they encourage artists to stretch their process into new media or forms of practice, using local materials and working in ways appropriate to the geographical space where the camp is held. While triangle writings emphasize formal innovation, participants often point more simply to the intensity of conversations about art as being key components of the workshop's success. Most critics and participants agree that the exchanges am among South Asian artists were particularly consequential. These were made possible by the formation of the South Asia Network for the Arts, which was funded by a grant from the Ford Foundation. It's worth noting, particularly in the context of this conference, that these Triangle Network workshops, ad hoc, artist-led, and roving, were organized in order to serve the production of art. Exhibition was limited and always thought of as secondary, though the open studio days held at the end of sessions have drawn crowds of hundreds or even more than a thousand people. The impact of Triangle Network workshops can be partly explained by looking at the infrastructure into which they intervened in India and Pakistan, to which we'll limit our comments today. In India, Koj can be understood in relationship to the similar workshops established from 1976 forward by Vivan Sundaram and friends in the hill station of Kosoli in the Kosoli Art Center. The Kosoli workshops were crucial for the development of art into the 1980s, at first mostly within the group of artists with whom Sundaram is directly associated. One of those, and un unfortunately, Gita, I don't think you can see this, but we had to put it in. <laughs> yeah, it's very important. Crucial historical document. One of these events was the 1983 Indo-German Art Exchange, whose format was quite similar to later Koj workshops. Kosoli also saw the emergence of what became known as the Kerala Radical Artist Group, whose members included then critic, now artist Anita Dube, who later became a member of the artist board of Koj. Right. There appears to be a nice direct line linking one set of events to the other, though of course I welcome comment on this point. In Pakistan, the art scene was fairly, fairly hierarchical at that time, as young artists were trained in art schools in which the Ustad Shagird relationship remained canonical, together with a well-worn modernist narrative. The Arts Council operated, as it still does, giving support to a select group, and art camps were mostly organized by foreign cultural institutes, such as the Goethe or the Alliance Francaise, and often led by international artists. The climate at that time, in um, around 99, 98, um, was really ripe for an alternative, independent space that could empower the artists and also for them to be active stakeholders within the art discourse. Vassals emerged really in order to fill that role while also reacting to the vibrancy of Karachi's urban visual culture in ways that became important to the workshop structure. Vassal worked despite significant challenges including political conflict, lack of government support, and um, bureaucratic red tape that hindered mobility and communication uh, within South Asia. Its impact was enhanced by the close engagement of visiting and local artists within educational institutions across the country, um, which really allowed for the introduction of new socially engaged models that hadn't existed before. 
It's worth noting how this relationship to educational institutions is quite different uh, from the interface that Koj had uh, with the Indian scene, for example. This makes the simple point that each node of the network was constitute, constituted differently according to local needs and conditions. Um, Triangle Network, for its part, uh, was established after Kasoli was in full swing in 1982. Its initial goal was to bring artists together working in the US, UK, and Canada. So um, Anthony Caro and Robert Loder organized the first workshop in upstate New York. As Robert has maintained, they aligned the triangle network with modernist principles that, above all, respected the artistic process and intuitive exploration, which sounds benign but was actually quite oppositional to the more conceptually driven practices associated with the predominant postmodernist art of the early 1980s. While modernist assumptions sneak into Triangle's ideas about form, the specific ideology that informed uh, these initial North Atlantic properly triangulated workshops was not brought into the later projects in Africa and other parts of the West, including South Asia. So in these sites, modernism was instead figured as an orthodoxy that was meant to be disrupted rather than a resource to which artists should return. Triangle Network's intervention was horizontal and democratic, with the network explicitly meant to broaden the accessibility of knowledge among artists and to counter the experience students would gain in art schools. In addition to the intensity of the workshop model, which we'll discuss in a minute, Triangle was unusual in its privileging of South-South exchange over the more typical center-periphery model. South Asian accounts of Triangle workshops have tended to focus almost exclusively on cross-border exchanges among regional artists, but it's important to note that the, partici the participation of international artists from around the world, but particularly from East Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. This was made possible by a mobility fund provided by the Ford Foundation, which also determined the South-South parameters of participation. The signature element of Triangle Network is, however, the workshop, which is understand, uh, understood as a form empty of content. Present director, Alessio uh, Antonioli, uh, maintains this heuristic division between form and content as a statement about the autonomy of particular workshops. The idea is that the cogeness of coge, for instance, is not determined by Triangle, but rather by the actions of Pooja Sood and her colleagues in India. No particular approach to art was meant to be advocated for by the network overall. That freedom from artistic ideology often extended to local workshop organizers as well who could advocate for the flexibility and malleability of the workshops in terms of content. According to Robert Loder, the necessary ingredients for a good workshop, as I said, were simply time, a balance of local and international artists, and a rich, usually semi-rural location in which to work. The only real requirement is that artists should engage with the locality of the workshop. So this um, contact with ground realities has really uh, had the widest implications for practice in the workshops and residencies. It turns out that differences in ground realities often determined or even forced changes in the practices of artists. The entire group would attempt to, oh, is it still pixelated? Okay. Hema, Hema is in this foot image, so unfortunately we don't see her clearly. Um, so it turns out that differences in ground, ground realities often determined um, or even forced changes in the practice of artists. The entire group would attempt to work in dialogue with the same place as well as with each other, as well as in relationship to their own studio practice. This set of experiences proved to be quite transformational for many artists. And the engagement with locality became a marker of artists associated with the Triangle Network. It also happened to coincide with the growing um, consciousness of locality in the work of South Asian artists, which was really related to and often in opposition to the ever-growing call within the international art world for South Asian art that represented identity. So Triangle Workshops strongly engaged with place, and with locality at the expense of identity-based curatorial frameworks. In fact, one can say that the decade saw very intricate and often implicit rejections of the idea of identity 
by South Asian artists. Triangle's focus on practice over exhibition allowed it to foster work that engaged with locality and avoided questions of representation. What this really means is that the questions of locality that predated the establishment of workshops were typically answered in formally different ways by artists engaged with Triangle. And that distinction has often served as an explanation of their reputation for success. That success also came in the manner in which these structures empowered artists over other art world actors, whether in the Indian art scene, commercial gallerists, or in Pakistan, educators. Within the art establishments of each country, these organizations provided an alternative basis of power for artists from which they were able to destabilize existing hierarchies. This can be seen in the ripple effects of the workshops, including the way that uh, they spurred other like-minded projects. The most celebrated of those is perhaps ARPAR, a cross-border exchange of works rather than artists, directed by Huma Mulji in Pakistan and Shilpa Gupta in India in 2000, 2002, and 2004. So this project, which, conducted, uh, which uh, was conducted in Pakistan with the help of Basil, shared much of the spirit of Triangle in its ad hoc nature, its focus on public engagement, and its combination of frugality and formal experimentation. Shilpa was active in Mumbai's Open Circle Collective, whose founding members, Sharmila Samant, later came to London for a gasworks residency. Um, so we see these chains of association were really crucial in the development of the network. And the ripple effect can't really be estimated as the life of the workshop was short, but the ideas and motivations that they sowed extended long after the space of two weeks. Equally important is the role Triangle Workshops played in the geographical decentralization of artistic practice, which is a crucial topic for us at this conference as we consider the place of the UK in the history of South Asian art. The South-South Dialogue was conceptualized within a roughly post-colonial intellectual framework which provided the basis for understanding exchange. Despite the fact that the map of Triangle Network looks uh, very much like a map of empire. In practice, the exchange actually defied ruling uh, many colonial trends. Most importantly, and interestingly, it was not based on the viability of English as a ruling language, as is the international art market. In fact, and this is very much Niza's point that I want to ask her about more uh, as we work, very often exchange was largely visual and practice-based rather than discursive, which is, is something that you can do in a workshop. Perhaps more significantly, Triangle Network as a network is reflective of the neoliberalization of the art world, by which I mean the retreat, retreat of state funding and support of, for art as a public good. This is mostly a matter of money, but also ideological frameworks. Each Triangle Network chapter was always responsible for the development of a local base of funding, which usually included some diplomatic funds. International funding often came with specific agendas, the most important of which is the classification of contemporary art practice within civil society, which is, was usually the logic by which Triangle Network cha chapters were funded outside the West. In the UK, the more relevant framework was multiculturalism, which has been the subject of fierce criticism, particularly within the Indian contemporary art community. In all cases, these funding frameworks had to be managed in such a way that they did not divert energy from the larger needs of the art community. Overall, the network's dependence upon foundation-based and private funding over state funding, while at first unintentional, turned out to be a strength, particularly when it is compared to other institutions with similar intentions, particularly in the UK. That's most true of Gasworks, which is at once just a node among many and a center for the network. It began as a space to fill the need <coughs> for bricks and mortar, which was perceived by Robert Loder to be important for, to secure funding. But as it emerged over time, Gasworks became important to the South Asian chapters of the network through its international residency program, which in the 1990s was only matched by the Delfina Foundation in providing opportunities for international artists. Since 1996, when uh, Vasudha Tozar came to Gasworks, the residency has hosted some 36 artists from South Asia. 
for those familiar with the art scene in India and Pakistan, and in Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, it's clear that the artists who came were not only able to articulate how time in London might, be af might affect their work, but also those with significant uh, potential as organizers who might strengthen participation in the Triangle Network in South Asia. And so we close with two stories from artists who participated in Gasworks, highlighted the particular productivities of London as a site. For example, Huma Mulji came to London in 2001 in between two editions of the R Par project and after the Cargill War significantly diminished Indo-Park relations. Of her experience, she writes, and I quote, at Gasworks, I found it hard to begin a dialogue with a place I didn't know at all well. So it was very much a time of solitude, in a good way, coming from a city of 18 million people. I wrote and I wondered a lot. I went to museums and art galleries and flea markets and libraries. Innova was a big hangout for me, and I looked through ideas and objects. I had been thinking about travel as opposed to tourism, and the difficulties of traveling as a South Asian. Even then, they existed, although we could not have imagined how much worse it would get. And the early suitcase idea started here. In the studio, I made a video based on the safety demonstration on airplanes but this time educating passengers on the differences, on the different headdresses worn by cultures that we flew over. My friend Steffi was visiting, and she is a theater actor and played the role. The video was funny, and she, as a stewardess, changed headdresses from Pakistan to Oman, Iran, UAE, Bahrain, Syria, Iraq, Turkey, and the UK, demonstrating taste and fashion. All of this using a large piece of cloth. It was sort of a critique of a flattening of hundreds of cultures onto one square piece of cloth and an early recognition for me on the Arabization of Pakistan, losing known cultural nuance to this orthodox pan-Muslim identity. This was also the time when the idea of the veil in art, particularly by artists like Shirin Nishat and Shazia Sikandar, was something I was grappling with. On the side, I made some whimsical postcard collages collected from the windowsill at Gasworks, which was a stack of postcards for events in the city. These were personal, embarrassing little texts. I didn't want to show and didn't, but, at, but as visual material, this is all I have. There were loads of drawings I made with carbon paper, copying over and over queues, underground and bus crowds, looking for sameness and difference. Mulji goes on to discuss how many friends came to London, including Sri Lankan curator Sharmini Pereira, an Indian artist Subodh Gupta, and curator Pooja Sood, as well as Latin American and Chinese artists, publishers, historians, and, under, and other interlocutors. Quote, and in this huge space of knowledge, of artworks and books and objects and ideas, she writes, an idea of what the community of artists means formed. This is beyond geography, religion, culture, and is about the culture of its own. It was also propelled into a ripple effect of believing strongly in the power of collectives, of conversations, and making together, and have since been involved with Basel, Basel Lahore, and 13 satellites in Lahore. Mulji's words largely stand on their own, but it is worth saying that her experience was typical by design high on exploration and process, and low on the production of exhibitable works. The residency period, nevertheless, fits into and extends her tra trajectory as an artist, leading to her more recognizable bodies of work and her work later on with Vassal in Lahore. The next project we'll discuss, Abhishek Hazra's 2008 residency project, Index of Debt, is perhaps the most engaged in critique of the form of Gasworks itself. This single channel video is essentially a slide display of index cards, style images, citing passages from the acknowledgments of well-known academic books, while an audio track is an edited, video, uh, edited interview with Robert Loder and Alessio Antonioni. The questions Hazra posed are very good, actually. I say this as somebody who interviews people all the time. They're critical and insightful, but also based on intimate knowledge of patronage and discursive structures of the global art world. 
The interview helps Hazra place himself and his work in a network of patronage that is parallel to that which he finds in academic texts. The uh, directors of Triangle present themselves and the organization in a disarmingly open and self-conscious way by acknowledging the potential risks of their undertaking, including what Alessio called the, quote, smell of philanthropy, out quote, that initially accompanied the project, and admitting to the complications of the art system. This project makes sense within Hazra's overall trajectory in which institutional critique has taken a, a central role, but it's also an example of the sort of engagement with London as a site that has been an expectation of residency artists. One of Hazra's questions to Robert and Alessio provides us with an excellent note on which to wrap up, as well as to return to the main concerns of this conference. Quote, given the fact that Triangle has been engaging with a, quote, non-Western art scene for a significant time, he asked, how do you read the institutional foregrounding of the political in contemporary art discourse? Alessio, whose interview came closest to answering this question, acknowledged the inter instrumentalization of art by states before asking in return, how many shows are defined by geography rather than by curatorial themes? Citing Tate's Century City and Africa Remix exhibitions, he says, if it's not political, then what is it? And here the it is art itself. Well, does the political understanding of art necessarily conflict with Gaswork or Triangle's overall goals, which, as Alessio further describes in the interview, are, quote, to allow artists a time to experiment, to give the possibility to create dialogue, to do all these beautiful things, out quote. So, in conclusion, our focus on the Triangle Network and Gasworks allows us to step a little bit outside of the framework of this conference with its focus on exhibition, we hope that it's been a useful intervention, allowing us to introduce a more speculative discourse on artistic practice and the critical role of place, moment, and more broadly, experience in the production of work and development of artist communities. These communities all developed in their own sites, but overlapped in complex and interconnected ways. Gasworks residencies have been an important, if somewhat elusive, part of the workshop model in which short, intensive reorientations of practice have had truly profound effects. These developments underwrite the unprecedented period of transformation that we've witnessed in the past 15 years in South Asia. The Triangle Network has responded to the realities and needs of the community, and in so doing, it models a kind of art institution that balances informality and contingency with, solid, with solidity and endurance. Informality can be advantageous in a, co in a contemporary moment in which flexibility is a watchword and also represents an extension of a longer history of modernist collectivism that has been crucially important for South Asia as well as the UK. The transformation of the individual workshops in South Asia into more institutional ent entities was really inevitable as artists associated with the workshop went on to manage successful careers and became less willing to organize, while the workshop format began to be a bit less improvisational and its outcomes more predictable. Nevertheless, Triangle and the larger network that it bore are enduring and continue in their organic way to respond to artist communities and crucially to the ground realities uh, in each location.